Hey everybody, Liam Clisham here for another Houdini quick tip. For whatever reason, this has come up in the past week a few times. I was trying to figure out how to make concentric circles. And then in another Slack, I, somebody else was trying to make concentric shapes. And uh, it just is weird that it's kind of all happening in the same week. And a few of us have been trying to figure it out. So I figured there must be some other people that are looking to do this as well. So if you're not familiar with concentric shapes, it's basically when you have one shape and it's equally distanced away from itself, like this triangle here, or if we're gonna go up to five, pentagon, hexagon, full circle, whatever you want it to be. Um, you can do it with a grid too, put that in there, or if you wanna do a sphere that has some ends on it and equidistance them apart here, like so. Um, used for a lot of really cool things and it's just pretty pleasing to the eye. So I'll go ahead and set that back up there. Um, so really it's quite simple and it would seem it's as simple as throwing down a copy transform and doing it. But if we take a look and we'll scale this up a little bit and add a few more, what's actually happening is it's building up on top of itself and it's adding to each iteration instead of spreading it apart the way that it should be. Um, so shout out to my friend Lucky. He helped me work through this a little bit and um, there's definitely a way to do it with wrangles, but I think using a for each loop is the simplest way. So what I've got is just a for each numbered. So if you hit tab for each and you've got your number one here, I'll just throw this down so you can see the difference. Um, this is what it makes. And the only thing that I've done is change the for each count to iteration, just because when I'm typing in the detail line, which I'll go over in a second, just makes a lot more sense to me. <laughs> and I know what I'm talking about and referencing. And so if I pipe this into here, go like that, and then I'll copy this transform, shake it off, bring it in here. I'm just gonna change this to, oh no, wrong one iteration I want it over here and this will be for each count one like so you'll see we get the same effect so let me clear this out and I'll break it down just a little bit so again super simple you want a for each number and we throw a transform in here and what we're doing is we're getting the detail attribute of the iteration here so whether or not you change this to say iteration to make it easier or what it comes with a standard, that's fine. But the detail is like this. You're, you're gonna reference your iteration here, and then you're gonna get your iteration attribute, close it off, and then you multiply it by whatever you want your scale to be. So I've got it at 0.5, but we can go 1.5, and you'll see we get that spacing in there. That's pretty much it. Now, the one thing that you can choose to do is either leave this one out or put it in there. And what's happening is if you take the one out, the iteration is zero. So there's actually a circle that's scaled all the way down to zero right in there. So it's kind of pointless at that point. So if we go back in and put the plus one in there. It takes the first iteration, which is zero and adds one to it. So that way it's actually scaled and not shrunk down all the way. So that's it. It's got a ton of awesome use cases. As I said, um, a lot of cool shapes out there using curves and splines and manipulating them with noise and uh, all that. They look really awesome when it's concentric like this. So I hope this helps somebody, um, especially since I've seen it pop up so often this week. All right, everybody, thanks so much, and uh, stay tuned for more as, as I wind down with being so busy with client work. Hopefully I can make some more of these. All right, talk to you soon.